Welcome back to the Pancake World, where the world is as round as a pancake and as flat as the Rocky Mountains. This week, we will be discussing meteors and the role they play on the globe Earth. For millennia, humans have seen streaks of lights in the sky and pondered of their origins. People of the Orient described, Stars fell like rain. Uncountable meteors went to the west. A fireball fell to the southeast, and meteors fell. More than 100 stars fell. Hundreds of meteors fell. But meteors themselves don't provide any evidence to a globe or a flat Earth. So then let's talk meteor showers. You've probably heard many news reports of upcoming meteor showers. Some of the earliest recordings of showers thousands of years ago can actually be identified as the same showers we see today, based upon the dates they occurred then. But what are they, and how are they so predictable? We've even named these meteor showers based upon where in the sky they appear to radiate from, such as the Leonids, the Perseids in July, and the Geminids in December. Following Copernicus's revelation in 1543, that the sun was at the center of the solar system and the earth orbited it, many began to view the night sky in a dramatically different light. Astronomers began to wonder if the earth was passing through clouds of dust on its yearly orbit around the sun, causing the dust to burn up as it entered our atmosphere. If these dust clouds were static in space, could that be why the meteor showers were so predictable? Because in theory, the Earth would pass through the same point in space every year during its orbit. And if that's true, where did the clouds of dust come from in the first place? Later astronomers began to precisely plot the orbits of comets, knowing precisely where they were in 3D space around the Sun, similar to what they'd been doing for planets for hundreds of years. American astronomer Daniel Kirkwood proposed in 1861 that meteor showers were actually the dust left behind as the comets orbited the sun. And if the Earth passed through the trails of these comets, the surface of the Earth would be treated to a shower of falling stars caused by the comet's dust. By calculating the orbits of the comets that passed the Earth's plane, astronomers were even able to say which comets were the progenitors of each of these showers. Some comets' orbits are inclined to the Earth's plane, so we only catch one part of their path, while others, such as Halley's Comet, is the cause of both the Eta Aquariids and the Orionid meteor showers. You may ask, but where does this have anything to do with the globe Earth? As you can see, as the Earth plows through these clouds, head-on in its orbit around the Sun, only the forward-facing half of the planet is impacted by the shower. Half of the Earth is actually facing backwards and does not impact the debris. Also, half of the forward-facing half is in daylight. So at any given time, as the Earth is passing through this cometary debris, only one quarter of the planet can actually see the showers. Those on the rear-facing dark side don't get the brunt of the shower until it passes midnight and begins to face forward. Those on the forward-facing day side don't see the shower because it's washed out by the sun. But meteor impacts can still be picked up on the day side through other methods, such as radar. And radar confirms that on the day side that is forward-facing in the orbit, the planet gets just as many impacts of meteors into the atmosphere. The theory that the Earth is a ball, that comets orbit the Sun and leave behind dust trails, and that this is the cause of meteor showers that can only be seen between midnight and pre-dawn, fits all observations. But how does this look on a flat Earth? We will start with the following assumptions. The Earth is flat. The AE map is the best representation of reality, comets are not really flying around in space, and the Earth does not orbit the Sun. The following observations are still factual. Periodic meteor showers are predictable. 
and they are only observable on the morning side of the planet, visually on the night side, and through radar on the day side. What mechanism can be proposed for the cause of these meteor showers on a flat Earth? Why do they only occur on half of the surface of the planet? The half that globe believers would say is forward-facing in the orbit. Some flat Earth advocates would propose that meteors are pieces of the firmament falling from the sky. But why are they regular on specific dates of the year? And how does that explain their visibility and timing during the day? It's almost as though the passing comets seeded a narrow corridor in space with a fine dust particulate, and that a ball-shaped, spinning, sun-orbiting Earth plowed through it. Unless the flat earthers have a more logical explanation, which I personally would gladly entertain, but please bring your evidence as well. Thank you for joining me again this week. If you like my content, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. And if you want to be the first in the comment section down below, hit that little bell so you're notified when something new is coming out. And as always, stay flat.